Are you confused by the terms hip extension, hip flexion, hip external rotation, hip abduction and adduction? If you are, then you're gonna wanna watch this video. I'm Matt Shu from Upright Health, where we help you think right, move right, and feel right. If you're new here, we publish videos on a weekly basis to help you move better and feel better. So think about clicking that subscribe button now. When you're training your hips, you may encounter vocabulary that's a little confusing. So today we're gonna to talk about the muscle groups around the hip joint and what they do to the hip joint. We're gonna talk about some specific vocabulary like flexion and extension so that you understand what you're doing as you're training your hips. Let's start with the hip flexors. The hip flexors are the muscles on the front of the hip joint. So on Mitch, that's gonna be here. On me, that's right here. These muscles are responsible for creating hip flexion. Hip flexion is when the femur, the thigh bone, comes closer to your chest, like so. So it'll, from the side view you can see with me, I'm getting hip flexion, Mitch is getting hip flexion. These muscles on the front, there are a couple that are responsible for flexion, but if you wanna get into deal, detail on that, then you can go ahead and look at an anatomy book or look for some other videos online. We're not gonna go into very crazy detail on any of these muscles, we're sticking to the groups. So then we wanna look at the quadriceps, so that's an area that people think about a lot. Quadriceps are the, f the muscles on the front of the thigh. Those actually help you extend the knee and also part of the quadriceps group helps you flex the hip. So that's included in the hip flexor group when you're talking about stretching and exercising and strengthening hip flexors. You're also concerned about the quadriceps. The next group of muscles we're gonna look at are the glutes and the hamstrings. The glutes are right here. They are your butt muscles. They are responsible for producing both hip extension and hip external rotation. So first let's start with hip extension. That's bringing the femur back. So when you're running, it's pushing back. When you're getting out of a chair, it's bringing the femur into a straight line with the rest of the body, right? So if I start here from hip flexion, this is going to be hip extension, okay? Hip external rotation, you can see uh, when Mitch starts here, when he squeezes the butt muscle, it actually externally rotates the femur. So that's the glutes. Glute max in particular is a big hip external rotator. The glute medius, which is on the side of your butt here, and the glute minimus both help you abduct. So abduction is when you lift the leg out to the side to the side of your body and away from the midline. The glute minimus can also help with rotation and the medius can also do rotation in both internal and external depending on the position you're starting from. Now let's look at the hamstrings. The hamstrings are muscles that connect below the knee and to the butt, basically to the bottom of your pelvis. Those muscles also help you get hip extension and knee flexion. So hip extension, you're familiar with already. It's the femur going back. And then knee flexion is bringing the foot towards the butt. So in the gym, when you're seeing hamstring curls, that's what you're doing. You're creating knee flexion and that's firing up the hamstrings. Now, the way you'll commonly see us talk about hamstrings and hip extension is when we're doing something like a hip hinge or a deadlift. Uh, Mitch, let me have you turn to the side so people can see you that way. It's like you're bowing, you're, you're bending forward to pick something up. When you're lowering down, the hamstrings are working to lengthen and stabilize you. And as you stand up, the hamstrings are firing, shortening, and creating hip extension. The next group of muscles are the inner thigh muscles or the adductors. So the adductors live here. They live from below the knee and up into the bottom of your pelvis and a little bit even to the front of the bottom of the pelvis. They are responsible for creating adduction 
A D as in dog duction. So what that looks like is taking the femur towards the midline. So with Mitch's right leg, he's pulling across into adduction. Okay. The adductors, inner thigh muscles, are largely responsible for pulling that way. They're also responsible for external rotation, which we'll get into in a second. When you're thinking about the inner thigh muscles and this adduction force, you want to also think about them from positions other than just normal standing. So for example, if you start with your feet wider apart, and you're trying to stabilize yourself in a really wide stance, it's your adductors and your inner thigh muscles that are helping you maintain some of that stability. Likewise, if we were doing a frog stretch of some kind where our knees are wide apart, that would be the adductors and the inner thighs that are being challenged in that position. Now let's look at internal and external rotation. So internal rotation, is when the front of the femur starts going to the midline, towards the midline. So it would look like this with Mitch's left leg getting internal rotation. The front of his femur, it points this way and then it's rotating to point in towards the midline. External rotation would be the opposite. So if we go out this way, the front of his femur is going to point out and away from its uh, midline from the starting position. Okay? So that's internal and external rotation. Now there are a number of muscles involved in internal and external rotation and the muscles that are involved change depending on where you are in the range of motion. So for example, if he's starting in uh, kind of anatomical standing position and he wants to actively internally rotate, he's going to use some of glute medius, he might use some of his um, adductors to do it, maybe a little bit of hamstrings to help initiate that motion, but if he were starting out here and then needed to internally rotate, it might be a little bit different. So we're going to look at that here in a second. When we are moving the hip joint around, the combination of these different motions drastically affects what muscles are firing. So for example, if we wanted to just create hip external rotation on Mitch's left hip, then from the standing position, he can fire maybe his glutes and some of the deeper gluteal muscles to just create hip external rotation. But if we said, for example, let's do hip flexion first, and then create hip external rotation like that, then we're actually using very different muscles from that first scenario. In this scenario, we start using some of the adductors, um, the sartorius, which is another thigh muscle, to create that external rotation where in the first situation, go ahead and reset, you only have to use some of the muscles around the side of the hip and maybe a tiny bit in the inner thigh. The position and the order of the positions makes a big difference. Another example of this, if Mitch takes his left leg and uh, creates external rotation and then flexion, it's going to feel different. And how about if we add some abduction? So now he's got his leg way out there and then if you try to externally rotate, it's going to be much harder and feel much different. So when you're doing any sort of hip training, you want to keep in mind that it, the order of your motions and the combination of those motions are all going to affect what muscles are involved. As you're training your hips, keep these ideas and these motions in mind. If, for example, you're trying to get hip extension, and every time you go to get hip extension, you get external rotation, then you know some muscles are doing something at the wrong time. If every time you go to get hip flexion, your hip also externally rotates, you know that certain muscles are firing at the wrong time or are not relaxing when they should. So when you start combining different motions, you go to more complex situations like a squat, you want to try to break it down in your own mind to the component pieces 
So you can identify the muscles that you need to work on so the motion is smooth and clean. So to recap the anatomy, you've got your hip flexors up front that help you flex the hip. You also have the quadriceps which affect the knee and also the hip. You've got your inner thigh muscles, your adductors that help you adduct and also help you come back from an abducted position. You've got your butt and your hamstrings that help you really get hip extension and also hip abduction. One thing we didn't talk too much about was IT band, the whole lateral side here. The IT band is actually a piece of fascia. It's questionable whether it can even contract enough to contribute to the actual motion of abduction, but it is something you could pay attention to in terms of helping it get less stiff and less tight over time. But real abduction generally comes from the muscles up along the side of the hip and strength from the glutes that live right on the side of your pelvis. So those are all the muscles that we're thinking about when we're retraining our hips. And now you know where they are, what they do, and how the combination of all of them together can affect how you train your hips. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and educational. I've got a question for you now. What do you wanna learn about with your hips? Leave your answer down in the comment section below and we'll check out all the questions that you guys have and see if we can't answer some of them with a future video. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with somebody you know who's having trouble with their hip mobility. As always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.